Hi, I'm Kelly at Book and Paper Arts. Welcome back, and let's get started making. Today I'm going to show how I made this, this art journal. It's a blank book that I have made using papers that I just had around my workspace. And what I'm going to show you today is how you can do the same, how I prepared the papers, did a little bit of mark making, and just got the whole thing ready to go. I need a new blank book because tomorrow night I am going to Italy for 10 days. And I want to be able to keep a travel journal while I'm away. But even if you aren't going on a trip, you I encourage you to, to, to join me and see how to make your own blank book. That's bold and fun and messy. And you can use that as an art journal or you can use it as a, a diary for your everyday life. Your memories, what you're doing. Because... After all, that is the most important journey that any of us ever take or make. So please stay tuned. I'm going to walk you through all the steps. It's a lot of videos, so please pull up a cup of tea and get ready to make some pages. If you like journal arts, altered books, vintage books, paper, and other ephemera, Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and be sure and turn on the notifications. And you will have more of them in your life. Let's go make a book. Normally, when I'm keeping an illustrated journal and a visual diary, I'm just using a plain old store-bought sketchbook with blank pages. But... Where I'm going to next week in Italy is a particularly old, rustic part of, um, gosh, Europe. It is, I'm going to Bologna, and from there I'm going to take train rides to Modena, Parma, Padua, and Ravenna. Ravenna was around since before the Common Era, and in the centuries, say about the 3rd to 7th century uh, Common Era, it was the place. It uh, was more important than Rome and as such uh, attracted very powerful people, beautiful homes, and artists and artisans. So when I get there, I'm going to be looking at a lot of centuries-old mosaics, frescoes, masonry, and uh, ruins probably. And I thought I would make a diary, a journal that reflected that mystery and messy beauty before I even get started and just lean into it, work into that. So I'm going to show you a lot of different papers that I'm going to be considering to, to put into this book. If you only have plain old white watercolor or cartridge paper, that's just fine. Use what you got. Also, in the next part of this video, I am going to be talking about ways to decorate our blank papers so they will be nice and messy, even if this is what you're starting with. These papers are left over from some art experiments that I made in the past, often to go with videos, and I wasn't really happy with them, but I'm not going to throw paper away. You think I'm crazy? So... They've been in the stash, and now I'm going to bind them into the book, and there's already some messiness there. These are pages from a stash. I go through these uh, bouts where I think I'm going to bind books, uh, bind, 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 and then so I'm tearing pages, making signatures, and I stall. That's the bad news. The good news is I have a huge box of different sized papers and signatures. These are tea dyed. I'm going to be showing some tea drizzling in the next part, so stick around for that. These papers are dyed with avocado uh, peels and pits. 
this is just a plain old brown paper. I think it was a paper bag. It was definitely a th wrapping paper or something. I'm not completely sure how much resolution I'm going to get, but it looks like if I use with something dark enough, that could be okay. Also, a failed paper folding <laughs> experiment. Experiment. Let's see. This is paper from a scrapbook pad, and it is uh, like a cardstock weight. I don't make scrapbooks myself, but I'm always looking out for really cute paper pads, and these are great. It's a nice weight, and look, it's already got that rustic masonry look, so I can start working on these pages and into them. Some text. Now, as far as using pages with images, some of these I might be able to draw into and some not. But this book is probably going to be collage heavy. I'm going to be using a lot of found papers from brochures and maps and ticket stubs. And I can either clip those onto these image pages or uh, glue them on and it will give a pretty background texture and layer. I do have some handwritten pages here. Um, they are original old pieces, but they're in really bad shape. So I do use them in collage. I use them in altered books. And today I'm going to treat myself to binding a couple of these into the book. And again, it's going to have that super messy, mysterious look right from the, the get-go. These papers are from a coffee table book, and I used the pictures in the coffee table book for collage. And the papers that were in the frontispiece are actually kind of, they're not as heavy as a watercolor paper, but they will stand up to liquid media, I think. And so some of them are going to have a little bit of the text there, but there's also lots of room for painting and whatnot. And again, I'm not going to waste paper, so use those. I also have this magazine. Now, this is a fancy art magazine, but I got it at a thrift store for 50 cents. So if you're in a thrift store or a yard sale, keep your eyes open. I like this a lot. Again, I won't be able to draw over this, partly because the paper's glossy. But I can use it for clipping on, gluing on, and for adding interest to the book, since there's going to be a lot of architecture and archaeology in it. Whoa. That looks pretty Italian right there. I, I might have to use this. We will see. Two other things that I'm going to add. I have, I like pockets in my uh, illustrated journals, especially if I'm picking up postcards and things that I don't want to glue down so I can take them out. So I have these pockets. This is from my tax bill. Thank you, HMRC. And I can bind this, I can decorate the paper before I put it in and then bind it in and I'll have a couple of pockets. I'm also going to try something with this. Um, this is a very tightly woven piece of cotton that I used for household stuff until it got just, it just bit the dust. But again, I don't want to waste it. So what I'm going to try to do is add some gesso or plaster. I don't want floppy pages, but if I can add some gesso or plaster, I'm going to see if that will stiffen up a little bit and go in the book. I'm going to use this as my my template-ish. It's uh, some of the found pages that have been tea dyed that I tore back in the day. Let's see, it's it's about five and a half by seven and a half-ish. 
that's inches. I don't know what that is in centimeters because I've misplaced my metric ruler. That's in my flat. I can't go get it now. Let's see. So what I'm going to do is start tearing pages using this as basic, this size-ish. It does not have to, um, these are going to be missed, mismatched, mix and match sizes. So I can do this, blah. I've just taken this one big sheet and I'm folding it over. So now that's going to be my folio right there. And I can tear that. Mm -hmm. Let's see. You know, I might even go, yeah, a little bit bigger. So what I'm going to do, because I wanted to have a, some of these pages to have this nice messy edge, deckled kind of faux deckling. Let's see, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. I'm just going to let that hang up there, hang up there. If I'm not happy with it, when it comes time to bind it, I can always make it a closer fit. So, I'm just going to go tear some more pages. Here's my stash of torn papers. Don't forget, you can use whatever you've got. You can use sheet music or printed text, maps, old greeting cards, bits of calendars. Look around, you've got tons of found paper. You may just not know it yet. What I have here are about 20 torn pieces. Okay, here's a page, here's another page. And I have about 20 all together. When these pages are folded together like this, they make a folio or a signature. And so two pages, two papers, gives me one, two, three, four pages or eight sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that means that... These 20 torn papers should give me 80 sides to work on. It looks a little thin, but uh, it's going to chunk up. And uh, 80 sides for 10 days, it better work. I don't want to over-decorate my pages before I get started. But I do want to, I guess you'd say, treat some of these pages to get them up and running. For instance, this is that magazine page that's semi-glossy. I'm not gonna touch this. Uh, I'm not sure if this is going to, it, the glossiness might repel ink or liquid. It's taken up some of the pencil, so I might be able to work in pencil on this. Or again, I can use it for collage and uh, other decorative elements. But over here, I would like to be able to, this has taken up a lot of valuable real estate in my book, so I would like to be able to work on this page. So I'm gonna cover it with gesso. I could just paint gesso on it. Uh, that's tried and true, but I'm going to show a technique here that I've adapted from a, a course that I'm an online course that I'm taking by Jane Chip. And it's all about textures and making textures in your journals. In Jane's technique, she uses gesso on a jelly plate with deli paper. Well, I'm not using deli paper, I'm using this magazine page, and I don't have a jelly plate. I am a pretty frugal person. And I just don't know if I would use a jelly plate enough to justify the expense. Maybe if I find one on offer. 
In the meantime, I do have a, a hack for making prints, jelly plate type prints, kind of. And that is a styrofoam block. Styrofoam is terrible for the planet, but if they're going to keep packing stuff in it and sending it to me, I'm going to at least turn it into art supplies, as one does. Sometimes you can also use, uh, someone told me that they use styrofoam from a pizza box. I don't know. So what I'm going to do is, you can see that in the past I have used this with pigment and ink and whatnot. But I'm going to make a messy layer here with a gesso. I'm not making it too thick or abundant because that's not the effect I'm going for. I'm going for texture. By the way, if you're interested in that course by Jane, I cannot recommend it enough and I will put a link to it in the text below this video so you can have a look. And you can see now it's spotty. It's not giving this comprehensive coverage. Just enough that I could probably work on this now with ink or charcoal and get more contrast. It's not going to be a complete contrast, but it will add some. At near to the end of this video, I am going to show how you work on these messy pages when you've got something like this with that's going to give less contrast. You're going to want to use a more robust material. A darker pencil, maybe charcoal, and again, I'll be showing that later in the video. But I'm pretty happy with this. This is definitely going to be enough contrast that I can draw or paint on this in a messy way. I'm going to do this again with another magazine sheet. I've put down a layer of gesso. This time, though, I'm going to add some ink. You can use uh, ink or tea, coffee, uh, a watercolor wash, whatever you have. But I love this ink that I've made from onion skins. And so I'm going to just put that on there. And let's pull a print again now. You know what I have? I have my... Oops. Okay, I did not mean to do that, but I'm not unhappy with it. The ink and the gesso have... Uh, <laughs> uh, smudged out on the edge and I'm just going to go with that I'm just going to work that over that page but let's pull this one and see how that looks oh that is nice yeah, so now we've got a little more room for contrast but also it's looking you know that sepia look parchment look peeling wallpaper look that's going to lend itself to the whole style that I'm going to be working in with old churches and ruins and whatnot. Ooh, I do like that. Again, if you don't have ink, try tea and coffee. I'm going to show a variety of this technique now. Uh, this is the, the gesso pull from the, the styrofoam. And it started to dry just a little bit. It's still damp. Now I'm going to take a soft pastel. I love soft pastels as an art supply. And I have tons of videos about how you can use them in some unusual ways. Uh, link to those in the text below this video if you would like to find out more about how to use soft pastels as for mark making and stuff. So what I'm doing now is I've taken my pastel and I've just got a card here and I'm making this into some, some powder. You can't really see much of it. You don't have to. That's not the idea. So now I'm layering in some of this violet color, which almost is like a stone color. 
and then I've got a green here. And I'm just kind of popping it here and there. And this is, this is what I almost call a DIY brush-o. It doesn't pop as much as brush-o, but so you can see that's there. And what I'm going to do to activate it, because soft pastels can work as a water-soluble, is I've got a spritzer with water. And you can see what happens when I shoot that on there. And now it's mixing into the gesso pull. Let's just pop that around. And the more you spritz it, the more it becomes liquid and you can choose whether you want to leave it kind of uh, spotty looking or whether you want it to be loose and drizzly or both. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with loose and drizzly. And so that's going to be a fun page to work on after that's dried. I want to add some mark making with rust. It's, uh, it's again, going to fit thematically with what I'm working with, I think. And uh, I can work over it or into it if I want to. What I do for rust is... I'm old school. I <laughs> There's often construction and building going on near where I live here in Swansea. And when that happens, I sometimes walk by and afterwards, and from time to time, I will just find these rusty washers on the ground. I do a lot of walking. So basically, I just look, I look for these while I'm taking walks. If you don't have that, I think you could go to a hardware store or a DIY store and ask for washers, not stainless steel. They need to be iron. But if you ask the, the people that work there, I'll bet they know how to help you. So mine are already rusty. And what I do to activate the rust is vinegar. That's not vinegar. This is vinegar in a spritz bottle. So I'm going to... Okay, let's, let's try this technique using the brown paper. So I'm going to spritz my paper a little. And then I'm going to spritz my washer with vinegar. It's just plain old vinegar. And then I'm just going to put that down. Let's put that there. And what I'm going to do is cover this now, press down, and leave it. I'm going to leave it for an hour while I move on to another pro part of this project. Maybe I'll put like a book on top of this to press it down. And then we'll come back and look at how that's coming together. Stay tuned. Here are some of those pages that were the blank pages in the coffee table book that I took apart. And there's plenty of nice space here to work on, but let's get a little bit more distressed. This is some tea. And uh, you just have to take my word for it, it's tea. And you could use a spoon or a spritzer, and I'm just going to use this um, pipette. And I do this with my, even with my fancy blank books, because it will give you texture and a background and take away some of that intimidation that the blank page gives. So now we have this, it's like a Rorschach test. It's a, a blot. And when it dries, it's going to have some nice, 
distressy background that can easily be worked into. I'm going to let that dry. Now, this is a... Oh, you can also use that technique again with coffee or ink or watercolor wash or what you got. I'm going to show that come down a bit, 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 bit. I'm going to show that technique using water pa uh, soft pastels as a water soluble again, but without the gesso. So I'm going to just not too much. This is a very robust color. And I like it. I also like adding a little bit of color since um, my pages are very, you know, the, the palette's very parchment-y, browns, caramels. This will add a little bit of prettiness. So we've got some marigold and some blue. And this is the water. Just going to spritz that water. Again, if I wanted to, I could leave it like this, nice and punchy. The granules, granulated, looks kind of cool. But I am going to go for more of a, a drizzle so that I can work over it. So now I'm just going to do that. And when it dries, I'll have a nice, some nice messy texture that I can then draw over and uh, paint over. Let's have a look at how the rust is doing. Uh, the answer is not so hot. This is the brown paper bag. And the color you see here is from the damp vinegar. When that dries, there's just only going to be this super light halo of, of rust. Not a very dramatic result. So maybe brown paper is not the best for this one. Here on the white pages, got a little bit of uh, contact there. And I have found that while they're still, this is still damp from the, the vinegar, I can do a little bit more messing with it. Let's see. That's okay there. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. some ledger paper that I'm going to bind in. So let's add a little bit of oomph to that. Let's see, that didn't do. This one's okay. Ooh, actually that's, <laughs> that's very okay. Um, so I'll try another another one here. If I was to steam these pages with the rust, then you get a much more dramatic result. But as mark making for a diary, a journal goes, this is just, just fine. Here's one of the envelopes that I'm going to bind in for, uh, to make into a pocket for postcards and whatnot. This paper is, it's a pretty color, but it's not very robust. I don't think it's going to stand up to liquid media. So I'm going to add a little stenciling and decorate it before I go. I'm probably going to bind, I want to bind it in like this instead of symmetrical. So this is going to be a page and then this is going to be like a tag or a tab on another page rather than a full um, page. And as we as I show you, as I work in this book, I'll show you what that's going to look like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this stencil. I just treated myself to some new stencils. I love stencils. They are inexpensive and you can find them almost anywhere. Big box stores, craft stores, or uh, hardware stores. And these I actually bought online. And this is a new... This is from Tim Holtz, and it's some rough style arches. And since I'm going to be 
drawing in a lot of churches and drawing a lot of churches. I like how these arches are going to pick that up. Ooh, that looks really good. And now when I bind this in, I'll just have this little tab with the arches like that. The ink is still a little damp on the stencil, so I'm going to turn it over, ink side down, and see if I can get a little bit of mark-making resist kind of thing going. Uh, I've put a, a tiny bit of gesso on the blending tool, and uh, it's going pretty gray because of the ink, the black ink that was still on there. And I'm going for patchy. I'm not going for complete, perfect coverage here. Ooh, I do like that. That is going to look really good. What I'm going to do is pull this over and line it up pretty much. Can I line that up? Sort of? Kind of? And that's close enough. And then pull it down here so I'm going to have a little bit of it on the diagonal which frames this page nicely. So, so we have a lot of archy stone looking mess. And I love it. While everything is drying, let's look at a little bit of mending. These pages are not, well, you, you can't buy that. It's, it's just degenerated too much. So there's two things that I'm going to be doing. I've got several pages that are quite delicate, especially after adding some of the, the gesso and liquid to them. So if I've got a page that along the folio, the gutter fold, is not holding enough to bind, first I'm going to use this washi tape. It's uh, pretty. It goes with a the theme. And not much of it's going to show anyway because it's it's going to be in the binding. But if it does show, it's going to look nice. And the next thing that you can try, if you need to mend some of these these pieces here in the gutter, is a tea bag. I use tea bags for mending books and papers and spines a lot because it is surprisingly robust and it looks really good. Now I'm just going to put this down here. And pat it into place. It is not perfectly symmetrical. It doesn't have to be. And now when I trim this off, I will have a page that I can fold and sew into the binding. I want to add a drizzle to this. This is that piece of scrapbook paper. It's kind of a card, card weight. I have my ink. If you don't have ink, you could use coffee or a watercolor wash. And I'm putting it in the pipette here. And just putting a big old lump, lump, stream across the top of the page. And now I am going to, it's going to, drizzle some on its own, but I'm going to help it along a little bit with my water spritzer. That's all this is, is some water, and that's letting it move. I don't want it to pool too much, because I still may work on this later. But that just gives the, the brick 
that was already printed there, this really rustic facade, and starts leaning into that peeling fresco look that makes me so happy. The papers are dry, so let's have a look at the finished papers before I bind them to give you an idea of those wet, messy techniques and what they look like when they've dried. This is that scrapbook paper that I drizzled with ink and then uh, with some water. And these are just tea, by, tea dyed pages, tea, avocado dyed pages. This is the brown paper bag that I tried adding rust to. It didn't really pop, but it has left some mark making. So I'm gonna put that in there, it's gonna look good. This is that page, another page with uh, the ink and then the drizzle. I'm not sure if this should go this way or this way, but I'm leaning this way because I think that when I come to draw on this page, this could be my ground you know, my or horizon or whatnot and this is going to leave room for the sky and so i'm this is this is the resolute this is the way it's going to go in these are tea drizzles where i just poured the tea and splotched this is where i mended a page and this one as well with some washi tape so now that spine is reinforced here is the gesso that i pulled from the the styrofoam faux jesse jelly plate technique thing and it's the one that i added the ink to so you can see it's got that stone like color now and feel This is the page that I reinforced with some tea bag. These are my envelopes that are going to be pockets. So I actually do need to open this up. And now, once this is bound into the book, there's a pocket on this side. And this side is going to be shorter, so this could either be just a decorative tag or I could clip pieces or glue pieces into it. Even though it's shorter, it, it can be used as a pocket or tuck spot. Here's the rust. It went on to bloom a little bit. That's fun. Here's one of the pages where I used that soft pastel powder, sort of a DIY brush-o, and then activated it with water. And uh, when that's set, now I've got this fun background that I can draw over. And this is also the gesso where I used the pastel powders. This is a lot of background but I can, again, either collage on it, or if I use a really robust pencil or a charcoal pencil, something to get that contrast, it's gonna look just fine. I assembled this off camera. It's pretty boring to watch me do it, but I'll just tell you a couple of the ideas that I had about why papers go in the order they go. One, I am going to do this in a single signature. That may be a mistake, but one, how bad can it be? And two, if it is, then I've learned something. I wanted to get this decorative page in pretty near the beginning, kind of set the tone and the feel of what the journal's going to be. Then I started putting quite a few blank pages opening onto each other so that if I want to do um, 
a bigger drawing of a, a scene or a street scene, some urban sketching or some churches, I'll have plenty of space canvas right there. Here's a pocket because I know it will not take me any time to start collecting those postcards. So there's one near the front. And then I put some of the messy pages together. So if I don't work on this, it's still going to be decorative and look nice in the journal. And then again, I've got plenty of blank pages opening up into a substrate. Here I just put those arches going together because it looks cool. And that's the middle. I decided not to use the cloth. Uh, I do like how it turned out, but it doesn't feel right in this book. I just don't think it's going to do me any favors. So I'm going to save it for another project. A book like this doesn't have to have a cover. It's the whole point of it being messy. But I wanted to show you something that I was thinking about for a cover. I My son sent me a present this week that came in a lot of cardboard. And I was breaking it down yesterday to recycle, and it ripped like this. And... So I did a little extra ripping like that because I know a great free art supply when I see one. And that would make a cracker of a cover. But what I'm going to do uh, if you were a few weeks ago, I made echo prints out of autumn leaves that I collected here. And I like to use these as journal pages and journal covers. So you can see the pages are sticking out everywhere. That's fine. I like that. That's going to be my cover. I've anchored all these pages with some bulldog clips. If you don't have the big ones, you could just use paper clips or clothespins. Use what you got. It does help if everything is held in, in place. I'm not going to agonize over this binding because it is so messy. So I haven't. A lot of times if you do proper book binding, you measure within an inch of your life. But here I've just kind of, I did measure from top to bottom, and I got about six and a half inches. So this is about the center right there. And then from the center, I went up two and a half inches here and two and a half inches here. You could do whatever you like. Just make sure these two sides are symmetrical-ish. I'm going to make my holes for the binding. This is a very simple binding, by the way. I'm just using a three-hole binding. Don't be scared. It is easy. Now, I'm going to go. I have a, a bookmaker's all, and I'm going to make a hole here. What I've done is I've put this over an old book. It's not going to matter if the book gets a hole in it from the all. Okay, so... If you don't have an awl, you can use an oversized, a big needle, a needle that you might use for leather work, say. Or you can also use a needle and then just go through this, the pages a few at a time and line them back up again. But if you find that you like making journals, an awl is very inexpensive. You can get one at a hardware store or online and you will use it more than you think. So I have my holes now. One, two, three. I'm going to go get some uh, thread and be right back.
I have my thread. This is actually a waxed linen thread that I bought for bookbinding. I got it at the discount craft store. If you don't have it, you could use, um, I was going to use some twine. That was my runner up. It's a, it's a thin twine. You can also use embroidery floss. Uh, you know what works good in a pinch is dental floss. It's uh, because what is dental floss except waxed cotton thread? I have, I'm using an oversized needle. They're not hard to find. You can get them in the sewing section anywhere. This is, you can start sewing your binding on the outside or the inside. It's just a personal aesthetic choice. But in this case, I want my little threads to hang out on the end. So starting on the outside. Just gonna go up to the top and sew one stitch. Pull that through, and it always gets caught there. Okay, now go all the way to the bottom. Thread your needle there. Come up, up, up. Now go back through, and this is your third and final stitch. And I'm just going to make sure, sure that everything is pulled nice and taut. Don't go crazy because I sometimes I have pulled it so taut that I pulled out the, um, the threads. Don't do that. At this point, you would tie these loose threads into a knot. I'm going to cheat. I'm not going to pull it into a knot just yet. I'm going to make a tight bow. And that's because I have myself found that when I make a homemade journal, sometimes these threads are going to stretch and give. And then the book will be a little too loose for comfort. Not the end of the world, though. And this way, if they do loosen up in the next few days, I can go in, untie the bow, tighten it a little bit more, and then put my knot in. I am very happy with how this has turned out. If you missed the video on making echo prints out of autumn leaves, uh, I'm going to link to that video in the text box below this one. So you can go find that and learn how to make prints. I said that I was going to talk a little bit about working on messy papers. As you can see, a lot of these you can simply draw on using your ordinary art pens or pencils, using watercolor or whatever you use. But some pages are not very practical for that. You can use these for collage. So you can glue elements onto these sections. And you can also clip elements in. And for that, I've actually, I'm going to go ahead and add some adorable, a variety of clips here. Just plain old paper clip. Cute one. I've got a bulldog clip here. I'm just going to go ahead and put them in my book so I'll know where they are if I need them. And then let's say I've got, I don't know, a ticket stub or... Uh, a bit of a menu or a business card or something fun and interesting, I can just clip those found elements into my book. But let's see, if you did want to work on a page like this, the name of the game is you need to be bold. If I'm going to use a fine tip, number one, art pen, I'm not going to get very much resolution on a page like this. 
So I have my portable art kit, which I always take with me when I'm traveling and when I'm not. I just always take it with me. I have a couple of videos on what's in my portable art kit, so I'm not going to redo that one today. I will link to that again in the text box below, and if you'd like to know what's what I take in my stash, you can find that. The short version is glue sticks and brushes and pens, and a watercolor. But on this trip, I'm going to take some other things that I don't always take with me. And these are some things that will really help me come at this page with something bolder. As I said in the beginning, I'm going to be using this book as much as an art journal as, say, a um, visual diary, which means I can have a lot of fun. This is a charcoal pencil, but it's pink. It's made by Stabilo. And see, if I wanted to do this, now I can make some loose... I'm just going to make a flower here. And you can see that this is standing up to that strong background. Here is another. This is just a plain old charcoal pencil. And I'm going to make these green splotches into bits of foliage. So now I'm going to... So charcoal is your friend. You can also just use a heavier, a heavier pencil. See, this is a black wing, and it is a super heavy line. So it's just a pencil. And it's giving me all that drama. So again, it's not going to work if I want to make something super fine, but if I want to go big. The other thing that I would do on a page like this is this is a water-soluble graphite pencil. It's uh, by Karen Dash. So I'm just going to draw a kind of an egg shape here with this water-soluble graphite pencil. And that's fine. It's, it's already got a nice silhouette. But I'm also going to use a water brush, one of my water brushes. Let's see. There we go. And now I can use this water to activate that because it's a water soluble. Okay, and again, this is not going to be a fine line. This is going to be a big, bold, messy line. But since again, I'm going to be doing a lot of masonry, I'm going to be painting and drawing churches and statues and ruins, I can use that messy style. I can lean into that messy style. And the grays and the blacks and the shadows, and the muss. Let's see if that sometimes charcoal will also work as a... Okay, that's not giving me too much. A little. It's moving a little. The other thing I'm bringing on this trip that I don't always bring is I've got a Altoid tin, and inside I have some Derwent ink tense sticks that have seen better days. Let's go over this petal now with this. And again, this is going to be very much, this is a water-soluble pencil. So I can take my box of sticks and now make some techniques my brush, my water, and I can make some beautiful images and make this into an art journal as well as an illustrated journal. So 
So all you need to do is think and go bold. You can do this. That's it. I got to go pack. But first, I do hope that this has given you some ideas about how easy it is to make your own art journal or blank book from whatever pages you got. Look in that, that stash. I know you've got one. If you have any questions or any feedback, please let me know in the comments below. I do love to compare notes. Please join me, subscribe to my channel, and stay tuned because I am going to try to post from the road. Definitely a, a video or two about working in the illustrated journal and maybe some sightseeing. The, the problem with trying to do sightseeing videos is uh, it sometimes means being really loud and getting your camera up in other people's business while they're trying to in enjoy their trip. So I, I find them kind of, I try to skip that part. But if I can, I will. Until later. Get up and go make something. Bye.